The underwater ruins of Yonagumi of southern Japan and the legend of the ancient giants who build these. Now this was recently found only about 70 feet under the surface of the water by accident. And uh, we've seen a lot of beautiful images of them. This is the location. As you can see right there, the southern part of Japan across from China. And we recently had a video uh, update that I put up today concerning the Denisovans of a Tibetan cave. And they also lived in Siberia. And they were, of course, giants. Their skulls alone and their teeth alone were as, twice as big as modern human heads and teeth. They were... Uh, three to four meters in length and height. Now, the legends of these Yonagumi giants, in 1996, an enormous underwater structure was found in the offshore uh, of uh, Yonagumi in Okinawa, Japan, Yonaguni. The 5,000-year-old structures include the ruins of a castle, a triumphal arc, five temples, a sphinx, and at least one large stadium, all of which are connected by roads and water channels and are partly shielded by what could be huge retaining walls. Uh, after the in-depth research conducted by experts, it's been proven that there is a vast amount of evidence of man's influence on the massive structures, it even it could have been made by giants who ruled the world before us. Now we even have uh, images of faces and carvings on rocks as well. Now, the legend of the giants of Yonagumi Island tells us that giants from a city across the sea often visited the Kavalan people of Yilan, who used the strength of these giants to help them build any kind of construction in exchange for feeding them. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And this is one of the pyramids under the water of Yonaguni in Japan, as you can see. Now this a way of helping each other, these giants helping uh, the humans, the Homo sapiens, was totally crushed after a huge seismic event took place a hundred years later, and the giant city, most of it apparently sank below the sea. Now, the archaeological claims of these artificial structures, according to Wikipedia, the Yonaguni Monument, Kimura first estimated the monument must be at least 10,000 years old, dating it to a period when it would have been above water. Could this have also sunk because of the Clovis Comet? We, know, we don't know. Anyway, uh, he therefore surmised that the site may be a remnant of the lost continent of Mu. And here it is, as you can see. It's in the Pacific. Mu is a mystical, mystical lost continent introduced by Augustus Le Plongon, who used the land of Mu as an alternative name for Atlantis. It was subsequently popularized. So in a report given to the 21st Pacific Science Congress 2007, he revised his estimate to date to two, three, two or three thousand years ago, because the sea level then was close to current levels. But um, he suggested that after construction, Tectonic activity caused it to be submerged below sea level. Archaeologist Richard Pearson believes this to be unlikely, but Kimura believes he can identify a pyramid, castles, roads, monuments, and even a stadium. He further stated that he believes the structures to be remnants of the Yamatai culture. And supporters of this uh, origin of, uh, of artificial structure, that is, construction, constructed as uh, opposed to Natural geologic, such as Graham Hancock, also argue that while many other features seen at Yonaguni are also seen in natural sandstone formations throughout the world, the concentration of so many peculiar formations in such a small area is highly unlikely. They also point to the relative absence of loose blocks in the flat areas of formation, which would be expected if they were formed solely by natural erosion and fracturing. Robert Soch believes the monument was formed geologically, but uh, it doesn't look like it. Now, this is the Denisovans. Uh, they were giants. Uh, they were, I would say, about twice as big as we are today. And this is the map of where they went, the locations of Denisovans. They were found in Siberia, the, Russia, also in Tibet. I just made a video today concerning the uh, uh, 
Denisovans believed to have uh, lived alongside modern humans 45,000 years ago. Let's remember we've had a lot of extinction level events in that time period. And this is Japan right there. And this is uh, Indonesia, Melanesia, where they uh, expanded. Here they are. Evolution of the geographic separate of uh, Denisovans. They were, of course, found in Siberia, also found in Tibet, the Mongolian plateaus, and they also lived around here. I wouldn't be surprised if, obviously, they went around the coast, even Japan, right here. So, uh, Denisovans compared with Neanderthal and Homo heidelbergensis and Homo erectus. So this is uh, where they lived. Their demographics, again, Sundra and Australia, as you can see right there, Melanesia, Indonesia. Denisovans appear to have crossed the Wallace Line. Wallace Line is between Sundra and uh, they called it Sahul. This is uh, obviously Australia. Now the Denisovans uh, were about uh, found about uh, 450,000 years ago, but this is what I wanted to uh, uh, talk to you about the interbreeding. Analysis of modern human genomes shows past interbreeding with at least two groups of archaic humans, the Andrasols and Denisovans, and that such interbreeding events occurred on multiple occasions. Comparisons of the Denisovan, Neanderthal, and modern human genomes revealed evidence for a complex web of interbreeding among these lineages. In modern humans, a 2011 study found that Denisovan DNA is prevalent in Australian Aborigines near Oceania, Polynesia, Fijians, uh, Eastern Indonesians, uh, Mawanwans in the Philippines, but not in East Asians, West Ind Western Indonesians, Jahai people from Malaysia, or Onga from the Andaman Islands. This means that the Denisovan integration occurred within the Pacific region rather than on the Asian mainland, and that ancestors of the latter groups were not present in Southeast Asia at the time, which in turn means that the Eastern Asia was settled by modern humans in two distinct migrations. The Melanesian genome, about 46%, uh, 1.9 to 3.4 percent derives from Denisovan. It was reported that New Guineans and Australian Aborigines have the most integrest DNA but Australians have less than New Guineans. That's until a 2021 study discovered 30 to 40 percent more than Denisovan ancestry in Filipino Negritos than in Papuas. Okay, there's a picture, Negrito. Uh, but by their estimates, only roughly 5 percent of the genome, they recorded the highly, uh, highest levels in Aeta genome. In Papuans, less Denisovan ancestry is seen in the X chromosome and uh, than autosomes. And some autosomes, such as chromo uh, cross chromosome 11, also have less Denisovan ancestry, which could indicate hybrid incompatibility. So we see that uh, they even today find Denisovan DNA in these population groups. In other regions of the world, archaic integration to human stems from groups of Neanderthal related to those which inhabit the Indija cave in the Netherlands, of all places, as opposed to archaics related to Siberia, because they come from Siberia. So obviously they travel towards the north. But about 3.3% of the archaic DNA in the northern Icelandic genome descends from Denisovans, such as a high percentage could indicate a western Eurasian population of Denisovans which integrated into either Vindija, Netherlands, or migrated modern, migrating modern humans. So we have them in uh, the areas of Scandinavia, uh, Iceland, Netherlands, from Siberia, I would, I would venture to say, right here, this way. And then we have uh, Philippines as well, from here. So you can see that, uh, and of, of course, Aborigines of Australia. So you can see the vast spread of Denisovan DNA. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.